Hey guys, check out my pH. Does your pH look like this? You know, just a few weeks ago, my pH would peak at 7.95, and once lights were off, the pH would get below 7.8. Now, not only does this slow growth of your corals, but I think anytime you're below 7.8, you're kind of playing with fire. And I actually think it was responsible for a couple of my new SPS frags RTNing on me. Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to be covering increasing pH to improve coral growth and health. And I'm going to talk about all the strategies that I tested and now use. Now I'm bringing back the slideshow here guys, so school is back in session. But before we get into it, please like the video, subscribe if you haven't. And also if you're interested in my short form content and updates on my reefing experience, give me a follow on my new Instagram account. So these are the things I've tried to raise my pH. We're going to cover each approach and I will let you know how much my pH increased for each of these strategies. So in summary, I opened windows, I purchased a CO2 monitor to help me know when to open windows, okay, and I added a refugium or I took growing macroalgae way more seriously. I raised alkalinity, I added a CO2 scrubber, and then I brought in fresh air through my scrubber and my skimmer. And lastly, I was just about ready to give a recirculating CO2 scrubber a try, but I found an alternative solution that I think will give me the same results without the added risks. So I have to be honest, this is a new issue for me. This is the first time I've struggled with pH, really. But I also have never had a tank in a basement before either, which I think is contributing to my struggles. First thing I did was I opened up my windows to see how the pH responded. Within a day or two of doing this consistently, I saw dramatic improvement in pH, so it was very successful. However, I didn't want to just blindly open my windows all the time, so next up I purchased a CO2 monitor to help me be a little bit more informed. Now if I found some folks were in my basement, maybe they're watching a movie or something, the CO2 would get near a thousand ppm with just an hour or so of time. Now the CO2 monitor also allowed me to see how quickly my CO2 levels would come down once I opened a window. And so I later learned through some testing that if I opened the window and also turned on my basement bathroom exhaust fan, I could get CO2 levels down from nearly 1000 ppm to about 500 within just 30 minutes. So now on occasion, I'll go down if I see my CO2 levels are pretty high or elevated. I'll open up that window a little bit for a short time and throw on that bathroom exhaust fan and get those levels down with just in 30 minutes. So in summary, opening the windows raised my pH by 0 0.2, which is, which is great, which is fantastic. And the, having the CO2 monitor and running the bathroom fan while opening windows made this whole process a little bit more efficient. So I wasn't just blindly leaving windows open at all times when I really didn't need to. Now I know I can't just open my windows in the dead of winter or summer, so I needed other solutions to help support my pH goals. So next up, I started growing macroalgae way more aggressively. My keto growth has exploded. However, this didn't have as much of an impact on pH as I had originally hoped. Adding the refugium on a reverse light cycle definitely increased my pH, I think it was about 0 0.05, which is, which is okay, right? But perhaps of more significance, that reverse light cycle process was a great strategy at reducing my pH swings and kind of closing that gap between the, the peak and the low. Okay, now next up, I tried raising my alkalinity a little bit. Now I test my alk each night at this time. The tank's young. I've got little SPS frags. The tank is unstable when it's this young, to me in my opinion. So I test a lot. Now I decided to slowly raise my alkalinity from 8 to about 8.5 to see how much that would impact pH. And in, and in summary, you know, this is probably the least effective approach, largely because I didn't want to raise my alkalinity too high. Uh, pH seemed to increase a little bit when, you, when I raised my alkalinity, so it did work, but I think it only increased by about 0.05, if that, maybe even a little less than that. Next thing I tried was adding a CO2 scrubber. 
I connected the scrubber directly to my skimmer so that the air my skimmer draws in has very little CO2, right? And I actually found this to be very effective at raising my pH. But the CO2 media in the scrubber was getting exhausted in about seven days. And that media, you know, to replace it every seven days, it can be a little expensive, right? And it also adds to your maintenance routine. So because of this, the next thing I tried was I, I ran a, a line of fresh air outside, fresh outside air, to my scrubber, to the air intake on my scrubber. And I figured by scrubbing fresh air from outside with less CO2 that the media would last longer than the seven days that I was getting. So I hooked up the CO2 scrubber intake to some three quarter inch PVC and I ran a line behind the tank and out a nearby window. Definitely, you know, this is not looking wife approved. It's a little bit ugly. So, okay, so I'm, I'm just trying to test this out. And my, luckily, my wife didn't notice. And then, you know, with the gap in the window, I used a little pink, a little piece of pink kind of insulation type foam stuff. It looks like styrofoam. It does have an R value. So I kind of filled in that gap. And I also wrapped the PVC air intake line at the end with some sponge to kind of close things off and seal things up a little better. And I also left the window screen, window screen on so bugs and other critters you know wouldn't get into the pipe and then some people would even add carbon like a carbon filter and what have you to make sure the air is fresh so in short the co2 scrubber raised my ph by 0.3 and by adding the fresh air line the media did last longer but only about three days longer so now instead of seven days i could get 10 days out of the media before my ph would start to dip back down again so in summary i would highly recommend trying a CO2 scrubber if you need to boost your pH, but know the media can get expensive and it can exhaust pretty fast. Now I was just about to modify my skimmer lid to accommodate a recirculating CO2 scrubber setup. So the idea behind a recirculating CO2 scrubber setup is you pull air from your skimmer cup that's already been scrubbed and the air is moist, so it's in recirculating fashion. And many have reported keeping your CO2 media moist, but not wet, can increase its life and effectiveness. Now, it'd be a great, you know, if the media could last for several weeks, right? Not at just seven to ten days. The drawback to recirculating the CO2 scrubber setup is the risk for your skimmer to overflow, and then that skimmate gets drawn into your scrubber, right? And then back into your tank. So because of this, I started researching other options and came across a newer CO2 scrubber design on the market that actually has been designed or structured in a way to moisten the air that it draws in through the scrubber. So the scrubber I picked up is by Aqua Forest, and here I am adding some media to the scrubber. And you can also add carbon as well if you wanted to purify the air being drawn in by your skimmer. Now here's the magical part about the scrubber. If you simply lift the scrubber up, you'll find beneath the scrubber a little water reservoir with some sponges. So the scrubber pulls air from the bottom that sits right on top of this little reservoir with the idea that the air will be moist and that will, keep, that will keep the media essentially working for longer, right? Longer than my seven to 10 day experience. So in short, I'm hoping this new scrubber will give me a similar performance as a recirculating CO2 scrubber setup, but without those added risks of bringing that you know, skimmate, if you will, if it overflows back into the tank. Um, we don't want that. Now adding water to this scrubber reservoir is just a breeze. So I have a little squeeze bottle, you know, with some RODI, RODI water. And I'll periodically, I'll just lift the scrubber up or elevate the scrubber and top off that reservoir here and there. So I think this is just a fantastic design and it takes just a couple seconds to add water to the reservoir. So in summary, adding a CO2 scrubber increased my pH by 0.3. And that's regardless of the scrubber I'm using. I'm getting the same increase with this new scrubber. But the verdict on how long the media will last me in this new scrubber is still yet to be determined. I'll, I'll report back, you know, I'll add a comment to the video or something to provide an update. I'm about a week out now and, and the media is still looking pretty good. So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that this, this does the trick for me and maybe I can get a month out of the media, but we'll see. So in summary, after adding a CO2 scrubber, a refugium, raising my alkalinity a little bit, bringing some fresh air into the home, when the CO2 monitor suggests it's needed, right? If I have a lot of people over watching a movie, having those periodic times where you open up the window and turn on that exhaust fan and kind of clear out the room, clear out the air. As a result of all of these things, my alkalinity consumption has increased dramatically by nearly 40%. I'm dosing 40% more. 
So I do think this is having a great impact on growth. So what pH am I actually hitting? Well, my daily high now is 8.27. So not the magical 8.3, but I'm that's you know I'm super happy with that. And my low now at, at night is about 8.1. So I'm not even dipping below 8 now. So that's that's fantastic for me. So this is a significant improvement. It's required a multifaceted approach. You know, I, I think I have to use all these techniques to combine to kind of achieve this. So the goal now is to maintain this level of pH, but to see if I can do it without having to swap that CO2 media out every week. Okay? Well, folks, that's my journey on chasing pH, which is not always recommended you chase values or, or you know, of your tank um, parameters, you know, things like that. But I really do think having an elevated pH is dramatically improving my coral growth and alkalinity consumption. So I would measure your pH. You know, don't chase a certain number, but if you can elevate it, if you can get out of those 7.8, 7.9 range, that would help your growth. But more importantly, if you're dipping below 7.8 at night, I think it's time to, to, to do an intervention. Now, if you haven't, please hit that like button, guys. Consider subscribing. Appreciate you all so much. Take care, and we will see you all in the next one. Peace.